Hello, my name is Erica Lyons, and I'm here with Mara Grossman, and we are graduate students in the Department of Horticulture at Virginia Tech, and today we're going to be talking with you about how to properly diagnose INSV in the greenhouse. INSV is known as impatience necrotic spot virus, and it is a plant virus that is spread through western flower thrips. Thrips vector this disease by acquiring the virus as larva and continue to spread it as adults. Now, the symptoms of INSV can vary greatly between species, but the most common symptom found are necrotic ring spots. Unfortunately, there is no cure for INSV, so it is important to destroy any infected plants in your greenhouse in order to prevent any further infection. It is also important to monitor and control the thrips population to also stop the spread of the disease. Here are some pictures of INSV symptoms found in two different herbaceous perennials. The first pictures we are going to show you are INSV symptoms in penstemon. This first picture is showing a clearly defined necrotic spot found on the leaf of Penstemon barbatus prairie dusk. In this next picture, you can see an irregularly shaped necrotic area also on Penstemon prairie dusk. And finally, this leaf shows multiple necrotic ring spots that have a slight yellow halo around them. Now we will be describing INSV symptoms in echinacea. This first picture is showing echinacea harvest moon, and you can see a light green yellow area with a necrotic ring spot in it. This picture is showing an irregularly shaped necrotic spot surrounded by a yellow area. Finally, this picture shows a dark brown to purple ring spot surrounded by a yellow halo on echinacea marmalade. So as you can see from the examples we've given, INSV symptoms can vary greatly between species of plants, so it is very important to confirm your diagnosis of INSV. This is a picture of a diagnostic kit that can be purchased from AgDIA, and it comes with a bag filled with buffer solution and a test strip. In this video, Mary is going to demonstrate how to use the test kit to diagnose INSV in your plants. Hi, my name is Mara Grossman. I'm a graduate student at Virginia Tech, and I'm here today to talk to you about INSV testing in the greenhouse using INSV immunostrips from Agia. Um, the immunostrip test kits come with buffer solution in a bag and a test strip. And it's very easy to do this test and you don't need any special equipment. You just need the plant you want to test, um, your buffer solution and test strip, you need a pair of scissors or clean clippers, and a pen or other some other kind of blunt object. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how to do this test um, first, what you want to do is take the leaf that you want to test. We're testing this leaf because it's got some yellow patches on it and we're suspicious this might um, be INSV. So I'm going to cut, um, I'm going to take this leaf off and then I'm going to cut about a one inch square piece of the leaf that's about the size of a quarter. Uh, I want to test part of the leaf that has symptoms, but I don't want to test all of the the dead tissue, so I'm going to cut about a one inch square piece, like so, and then I'm going to cut open my buffer bag and be, um, need to be careful not to spill the solution that's in the bag. Then I need to separate out the sides of the bag. The bag has mesh on both sides, so you can see there's mesh on both sides. And then I want to put my leaf sample in the bottom of the bag. So once the leaf sample is in the bottom of the bag, then I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to use it to rub the sample between the layers of mesh in the bag. And you can see while I'm doing this that the solution has turned color. It is now kind of a green color. 
So now we're ready to go ahead and insert the test strip. You can see the bag has an empty spot where there's no mesh, and this is where you're going to insert the test strip. The test strip is marked, so you're not supposed to submerge it any further than that white line right there. So I'm going to go ahead and submerge my test strip. And I want to make sure not to push it in any further than that white line. So it's just under the solution, just up to the white line. And now we have to wait to see the results. Okay, so we've waited about 10 minutes to see our results. The results can take up to 30 minutes. And you can see that one pink line has appeared on the test strip. That is the control line right there. Um, if that line does not appear, then you, the test is invalid and you should repeat it. If that's the only line that appears, then that means that INSB has not been detected in your plant sample. If a second line appeared, then that would be indicate a positive result or that your plant does have INSB. The picture on the left shows two distinct pink lines on the test strip, which indicates that there is a positive result, meaning that INSV is present in the sample. For more detailed instructions on how to use this test, you can see the user guide on the AgDIA website. Also, you can find more tips on how to control thrips on the eGrow Alert Volume 3, Issue 27. In summary, these amino strip test kits can be a useful tool for diagnosing INSV in your greenhouse. If your plants turn out positive for INSV, it is important that you destroy them right away and also to monitor your thrips population in order to prevent any further spread of the disease.